Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. I'm going to do something a little different today. As some of you know, I put up two videos a day. They tend to go up at 10 a.m. Eastern and 2 o'clock Eastern. And uh, the two videos today are going to be related. So you'll understand this in a second. And eventually, I will cross-link the videos to each other to make sure that people see both in context. But I don't want to do a really long video because that's just, uh, I mean, who's got time for that? <laughs> but it's a big, big story. Uh, Adam sent me notes. Steve, check this out from AtlantaNewsFirst.com. Divided Congress agrees cash seizures at airports are un-American. And Brendan Keefe wrote this. Now, in this context, this is, of course, the TV station that showed how there were law enforcement agencies at the Atlanta airport in plain clothes, walking around, just checking to see if people had money on them. And if they did, they would just take it and say, we think you're a drug trafficker. Even if the people had great explanations as to where the money came from. You want to get your money back, it's an uphill battle at best. So I said before, we can publicize this all we want. That won't make it change. What we need to make it change is either a court to say it's wrong or legislation. And now 18 co-sponsors of a bill want to make it harder for the government to seize cash from regular people, especially airline passengers. And half of them are Democrats. Half of them are Republicans. And so when you got people on both sides of the aisle saying this is wrong, it's wrong. So in a rare sign of unity, members of Congress want to make it harder for the government to take your cash without charging you the crime. Uh, Rand Paul said you ought to be convicted before they take your stuff. And <laughs> I've said it almost with those exact words because that's how simple it is. You don't take people's stuff unless you're convicted of a crime that has to do with that stuff. So he told uh, Atlanta News First that the Kentucky Republican has repeatedly, repeatedly filed a bill to change civil asset forfeiture laws, but he never gets any traction. He never gets any traction because there's other Congress people who think, or other senators who think, eh, you know, it raises money to fight crime. So I'm going to ask people who are upset by this to contact their legislators in Washington and let them know that you're aware of this and you want them to vote for this and to support this because there are powerful entities that are against this, which is what my second video will be about. The bill has never made it out of committee in the U.S. Senate, but the House of Representatives version is closer than ever to making some progress. It's called the Fifth Amendment Integrity Restoration Act or the FAIR Act. It's H.R. 1525 and Representative Tim Wahlberg of Michigan says, we are going to treat law-abiding citizens at the very least the same as we treat criminals. <laughs> Can you imagine? It's controversial to suggest that non-criminals be treated as well as criminals. So he's been fighting for nine years to get this bill to the floor. Atlanta News First investigates exposed the inner workings of a Drug Enforcement Administration program called Operation Jetway. The DEA trained local police and federal agents to blend in with passengers at airport gates where... They were recorded selecting passengers for extra searches at the boarding door. People had already gone through TSA. They'd already gone through the x-rays. They'd already taken their belt off, put their belt back on. Somebody walks up, hey, excuse me, can I look through your bag? Can I? So court records show if the agents find $5,000 or more in cash on a passenger flying from Atlanta to Los Angeles, they'll simply take the money as the proceeds of drug trafficking. In the vast majority of cases reviewed by Atlanta News First Investigates, the passengers were not arrested or even charged with a crime. And many of them had actually good reasons as to why they're traveling with cash. So Wahlberg says you'll catch some crooks in the process, but sadly we're catching too many innocents who have to fight their way out of this bind. And many of them can't do it because it costs money to fight the government. You're supposed to be innocent until proven guilty, not, oh, you're guilty, give me your stuff. And then you can have it back. You prove you didn't get it through ill-gotten gains, Paul said. That's not the way our country's supposed to work. And he's right. He's right. The FAIR Act would increase the standard of proof for the government to keep money after it's seized using civil asset forfeiture in airports or anywhere else. Currently, the standard of proof necessary is a preponderance of the evidence, which simply means it's more likely than not that the money is either from drug trafficking or some other illicit source, that burden on the government is far lower than the beyond a reasonable doubt standard required for criminal conviction when we're talking about crimes. Wahlberg says give them at least the benefit of the doubt that a criminal gets. Federal court records show DEA task officers will seize money if the passenger can't prove 
on the spot that their money was earned legally. And by the way, I've seen examples where they explain where it came from. They go, I don't believe you. I hope you understand that in court, words out of your mouth become testimony and have weight. But when you're at the airport and they're taking your money or at the side of the road and they're taking your money, they can just choose not to believe you, which makes them judge and jury. Unlike a criminal, they have to prove they're innocent. It's not the other way around, which we normally expect, Wahlberg said. That's a problem. The FAIR Act would require police prove the money is from criminal activity with clear and convincing evidence. About 90% of cases are handled under administrative asset forfeiture, which means the seizure is never reviewed by a judge. Never. Under current law, the agency that seizes the money gets to keep it, which has a perverse financial incentive. I've heard that word perverse put in front of that so many times. Now it's become almost like a knee jerk. The U.S. Department of Justice took in $1.3 billion last year from civil forfeiture. Uh, and most of that came from the DEA. The DOJ has over $5 billion in its fund raised from civil asset forfeiture, which the department can spend however it pleases. Most of it is spent in the programs that lead to more cash seizures. So it's a money-making monster that gets self-fed. The more it feeds, the larger it gets. The larger it gets, the more it can find. It's a perverse incentive, Wahlberg said. <laughs> Paul said it was rotten to the core. A lot of people get caught up in these are minorities, and people who don't have the necessary economic circumstances to escape the clutches of the government. It, the point is, <clears throat> you don't have to be in some protected group. You don't have to be anybody special. You, don't have to, you, you, you can literally be just Joe Average or Jane Average, and you got $5,000 in cash on you, and you're getting on board a plane. And they go, hey, that cash, where'd that come from? I just took it out of the bank. Here's my withdrawal slip. Yeah, but we think you're going to buy drugs with it. Give it to us. And they take your $5,000. Start making phone calls and find an attorney who will take your case for less than $5,000. And understand that if you do find such an attorney, that when you win, you got to pay your attorney. But when you lose... You're still out to $5,000, and you're out whatever paid your attorney. And no attorney is going to take that case for less than $5,000 unless they do it as a favor. And you want to get a good attorney to handle a case like this, and it is economically impossible for you to win that case. And they know that. They know that. There are so many seizures they do with small amounts of money because they know they're going to get to keep it. It doesn't matter the person won't be able to afford to fight it. And if they do fight it, it's a losing battle. Some people will fight it on principle. But do you really want to spend hard-earned cash knowing all you're doing is digging the hole deeper? And most people won't do that. If the bill becomes law, all the money seized by the federal agencies would go to the general fund. Agencies like the DEA would no longer be able to keep what they seize. And that right there would put an end to a lot of it. A lot of it. The FAIR Act has 18 co-sponsors at this time, half of whom are Republicans, other half Democrats. So, for instance, U.S. Rep. Jamie Raskin of Maryland is Wahlberg's primary co-sponsor. Uh, and so, in a divided Congress, it's rare to see U.S. Rep. Paul Gozar of Arizona and U.S. Rep. Sheila Jackson Lee of Texas agree on something. But here they are, let alone a bill that would regulate policing. But the proposal seems to have united civil rights activists with civil libertarians, and enough Americans have heard about this now to where people are getting pissed off. Sorry, I, I shouldn't have used that word. <laughs> Just kidding. U.S. Rep. Hank Johnson is one of the co-sponsors of the House bill. He's a Democrat from Atlanta. He's a criminal defense lawyer. And his Republican colleague from North Carolina, U.S. Rep. Andrew Clyde, is also a co-sponsor. They rarely team up on anything. By all accounts, the House Judiciary Committee has become a partisan battleground. Most hearings and proposals in the committee ignite bitter exchanges between members from the two political parties, but not the FAIR Act. This is something they appear to agree on. The measure passed the House Judiciary Committee with unanimous support in June. Up until my bill came out of their committee, Wahlberg said, they hadn't passed anything out of the committee unanimously. Now, meanwhile, law enforcement agencies have come out against the bill. Law enforcement agencies have come out against the bill. And here's the thing. The National Sheriff's Association sent a letter to members of Congress in July after the bill passed the Judiciary Committee 
And they wrote and explained all their reasons as to why they think this law is bad. And the three-page letter starts off by saying, Congress would be giving the cartels a gift. A gift. So the FAIR Act has been favorably reported to the full House. Now up to leadership to decide whether it gets a vote on the floor. Uh, GovTrack gives it a 44% chance of passing. 44%. Now here's the deal. It's still early. And a lot of people have not heard about civil asset forfeiture. And a lot of people have not heard that the FAIR Act is alive. And so here's what I'm going to suggest, and I'm going to suggest this twice today, is that you make a mental note to contact your people in Washington. And you've got people in Washington, okay? And I don't care if you email them or call them or write them a letter, whatever it takes. But let them know that you are in favor of this law. And here's the thing. Many people don't contact their representatives, their senators. They don't, they don't do that. And the point is that if enough people do this to where they get messages, emails, texts, whatever it might be, they get these messages from, from people they never heard from before who say, I don't normally write to my congressman or my senator, but here I am, and here's why. You don't have to write a dissertation. You don't have to say, I saw this on Leto's Law. You, you can say anything you want. Just say, I am in favor of the FAIR Act, H.R. 1525, the Fifth Amendment Integrity Restoration Act. And if you're in favor of it, let them know. And if enough people contact them and let them know they should support this and that their constituents support this, and by the way, there's an election coming up. There's an election coming up, and I'm in favor of this. I think I want to have a representative in Washington who's in favor of this law. And I'm going to keep that in mind in November. It doesn't have to be a threat, but it might be worth mentioning. There's an election coming up. Now, senators, of course, may not be up for election right now, but the House reps, it's a different story altogether. You might want to let them know. An election coming up, and I'm in favor of this. H.R. 1525, the FAIR Act, F-A-I-R, the FAIR Act. Once again, they came up with a name that kind of makes sense. So here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to end this right now because this video has already gotten to the point where I normally end. And my next video, I have in my hands the letter sent by the National Sheriff's Association to a member of the House of Representatives. And we're going to go through that in the next video in just a second. <laughs> Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. If a cluttered desk is the sign of a cluttered mind, what is the meaning of a clean desk?